G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, recently I managed to break one of the reverse tumbler gears on this little 7x12 lathe that I got in for review. You would have seen the review. It's a, it's a great little machine, super accurate. But anyway, now we're in a situation we need a, a replacement gear. I've chipped the tooth off one of them. And it was all my own fault. It was all totally my fault, nothing to do with the lathe. But from the get-go, I, I didn't like the idea that they used nylon for the reverse tumblers, because, well, for the tumbler gears, because they are probably two of the hardest working gears on a lathe. And, yeah, I suppose if one's going to break from a crash, it'll be a, one of those tumbler gears. So what do you do? Well, I can make up a... I can make up a Module 1 gear, no problem. I've made them for my other lathe plenty of times. Had oops moments before and uh, over pushed, over stressed the little thing. Or you could do what most people do who probably can't make gears, they're probably not set up for gears. It's a bit of a specialist field. They go and buy some. So, you know, there's the option. Do you buy a nylon gear like you've got or do you get some metal gears? So I thought, oh, this is a good opportunity to buy some metal gears and I can replace whatever I feel like replacing. And anyway, that's what I did. I got some, ordered some off of eBay. And uh, it's, I mean, this is a generic lathe and the gear set is generic. So provided you buy the right model gears and... Uh, the ones you want to get are CJ0618. So that's what this type of lathe is. Anyway, they've arrived. The box is on the bench, so let's have a look and see what's been sent to me. And yeah, these were $66.47. And uh, I thought that was pretty reasonable for what you get. So let's look, let's look in the box. So here's the box made in China of course and it was sent from a warehouse in Australia so it took about a week to get here typical COVID-19 you know, time span everything seems to take a week these days it weighs 0.6 of a kilogram so you know, a bit of weight there alright I'll take out the contents and we'll have a look at them so the bubble wrap's been removed and you can see that we've got the full set of gears, the full five gears that you need. Each gear's in this plastic wallet and two drive belts. And I think that's a pretty good deal for $66. I mean, if you try and make one gear, I mean, are you going to make a gear for $10? I don't think so. And these are beautifully made. Have a look at it. And they're steel. They're heavy. Very heavy. They look really good. I can't complain at all. But first look they look fantastic and of course these are your reverse tumbler gears here one's a 25 tooth one's a 20 I'm not going to fit all of them because as I said previously as these little lathes don't have a, a shear pin or provision for a shear pin on the lead screw if you use all metal gears I think that's going to be a, a, an accident waiting to happen if something's going to break that shouldn't break so you want to leave at least, at least one plastic or nylon gear in your, in your gear train. So if things go pear-shaped, it's better to shear a tooth off one plastic gear than, than break something much more serious. Now, I will take off one other gear and put a larger gear on. I'll show you which one I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to take this one off and put a, a metal one on there not just for the sake of changing it but also to show you how well this thing is made because I've seen reports where some of these gears have been so and shafts have been so poorly made that had to be hammered together well that doesn't happen with this this just goes together beautifully I'll take it off and show you that's how you want it well put together, well machined Okay, let's get a 80 tooth and put on. Well, we've got a problem. This isn't as easy a job as I expected. This original nylon pulley goes on and off, 
and uh, fits just beautifully, just a bit of wiggle room as she goes on. So that's a perfect fit. There was a little bit of a burr on the edge of the keyway, I filed that off, and it hasn't made any difference to this. But this won't go on because it's a little bit too undersized in the middle. If we use the um, dividers, this is always a good way to, to measure, to feel the tightness of things. You can feel the, the friction on that. That's a good fit. That's perfect. Now if we run it through here, it doesn't want to go in. So this is definitely undersized, needs opening up. I can do it, I'll, I'll put this in the, the 10 inch lathe and uh, we'll just have to take a skim out. Oh, there's no way I'm going to knock this on with a hammer or anything. And uh, gears should just slide on, they shouldn't have to be belted on and if you belt it on, you're going to have a hell of a job if you ever, ever have to get it off again. So the, the solution is, the answer is to to open this up a little bit. It's, it's not wiggle tight, it's tighter than wiggle tight, so it's, um, it's definitely a good fit. I found the best way to put these on is put on the gear first and then line up the keyways and then just knock it in from the outside and that way everything goes on nicely. Just use a centre punch just to, uh, to bring it in, but it's a good fit. If you do this, when you skim these, you're going to have to use a, something with a very sharp edge on it, like a micro boring bar, don't, or a carbide boring bar that's got a sharp edge. Don't use normal indexable tip boring bars. They're, they're not really fine enough to go down the, the few uh, microns that we're going. You know, we're going very, very small amount here. All right, I'll put it, tighten, put it all back together, tighten it up, and give it a go. Alright, let's give it a go and see what it's like. Adjusted up the mesh on the gears a little bit, and uh, yeah, she's pretty quiet. That's good. I had that a little bit too tight, but uh, yeah, that's good now. Oh well, mission complete. Put the cover back on and we're ready to go now. But yeah, that's the thing with this. Buying aftermarket stuff, you're never sure you know, how it's going to fit. And it was just that tiny bit to undersize. Just took a skim off and the gnat's whisker and it just went on beautiful and that was it. It might have belted on, but I wasn't going to do it. I would like the gears to go on and off fairly easily. As it is with the keyway in there now, because you have to knock that in, I'll have to take that off with a puller if one of these gears shits itself. Well, it'll have to come off again. And, uh, yeah, you just use a three-point puller, and that would take it off no problem. I mean, it's not on that tight, but it's tight enough that yeah, you won't be able to wiggle it off. It's uh, the keyway just won't let that happen. But everything's good and true. Yeah, worked out well. So is it just both of the 80 tooth gears, which are a tiny bit undersized, or does the 45 tooth gear also have the same problem? Well, you can always check. And the easy way to do this, don't worry about using uh, micrometers or verniers, whatever. I always do it well by feel. We know this fits. You get your dividers or your, or your measuring device. So it's just, you can just feel what it's like. Just drag on it. And then you get the other one that you want to 
test and see what it's like. In this case, this one's okay. That should drop straight on without any problem at all. That is just a fraction. No, I'd say it's pretty much spot on. So that's how you do it, folks. Do it with these. That way you can get a good reading. If you try and do it with a measuring device with, you know, readouts, you're going to have all the strife in the world. And here we are, this is the one. I actually did machine this, this second one out afterwards. I thought, well, I might as well have it ready to go. No good if I've got to do it, you know, when I need it. So, so that's it. It's all easily done. And we'll have a look at the lay to see if you can do it on the 7 by 12 The answer is yes, you can, but you'll have to use your external jaws. These are the standard internal. These are your external. And if you look at where they'll come to, that's normal position. And that's enough to center the gear. So, yes, you can machine the center out on the lathe itself. I didn't do it because I haven't checked these jaws for concentricity. I don't know how uh, good they are. So I did it on a lathe that I knew had perfect uh, concentricity. So yeah, it's all, do it's all doable, but just be aware of that problem. Otherwise, I mean, they're excellent value for money and I don't see any other faults with them, but you should not have to bash or belt on gears. They should just just go on very easily. Just a slight bit of tapping pressure and that's all. So that's it. The lathe itself wasn't the, the problem. The problem was the aftermarket part. Everything looks good on it. There was a little bit of burring on the, on the keyway edge, which wasn't enough to really cause any issue. I just filed that off anyway. So if you do go the steel gear route, or way, just be aware that, yep, it's not absolutely straightforward and you might have to spend a little bit of time on it, but if you take your time, as I said, get a, 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 get a, a nice sharp boring down to do that so you can just ease it out. You know, don't use a rolled, you know, indexable carbide. They'll be too severe. Uh, it's got to be finer than that. Yep, you can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you found it interesting. See you next time. Cheers.